Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Joel here at the DVE store. So today we're gonna to talk about G Technologies G-RAID hard drive and how to configure it to optimize your workflow. So let's jump on in. So first things first, what is RAID? Well, it's not the stuff that kills bugs, I'll tell you that right now. RAID stands for Redundancy Array Individual Disk. It's the building blocks of redundancy in data storage drives. So let's dive in and I'll show you what all the different RAID options are. RAID 0, or striped, this format distributes different parts of the data into several drives, giving you the maximum speed. This is specifically used in editing content because the data is distributed without redundancy. If one drive fails, all data will be lost. RAID 1, or mirrored, gives us the maximum protection, but all of the data in the drive is distributed and copied twice. So if you have a drive just like this G Technology 8 terabyte, you will really only have four terabytes of storage capacity because all of your data is being mirrored. If one hard drive fails, you still have a backup copy on the other hard drive. RAID 5 or single drive redundancy. This would go well with a drive like the G Technology G Speed Shuttle where there are at least four disks. If one fails, then three of the four disks will be fine. RAID 6 or two drive redundancy. This particular setup requires at least four disks. In this scenario, up to two drives can fail, leaving the remaining drive safe. You also can combine some of these RAID settings to be able to stripe and mirror your data to get the ultimate performance. But for now, we're just gonna stick with the simple the RAID 0, 1, 5, and 6. All right, next I'm gonna show you how to configure your G-RAID hard drive. But before we start, you wanna make sure that you have no important information on there because this could purge all of your data and it could be lost forever. Once we have our drive that we're working with and all other drives have been disconnected, what we'll want to do is go to G Technologies website and I'll put the link down below for how to get here for you. What you'll do is go to support, then we'll go to G Technology. It'll ask for which product are we working with. We're gonna be working with the G RAID family and then we're gonna to wanna to select our drive. So this one specifically, we're working with the G RAID with Thunderbolt 3. Now we're gonna to go to Downloads. You'll see your model number here for the interface. Then what we're gonna do is since we're working with a Mac, we're gonna do the software for Mac. It's gonna automatically download to our computer. Then we'll go ahead and click on the application. Then once we have the application open, it's gonna automatically just detect your hard drive. We're working with the G-RAID with Thunderbolt 3. Again, it'll come out of the box, formatted for Mac and for RAID 0. So we're gonna to wanna to make this RAID 1 because we wanna have this the ultimate backup protection. We'll click on configure. There's where the RAID 0. Then we have protected RAID 1, which is gonna be that mirroring of both drives are gonna be the same. Then we also have individual disk JBOD. We're not gonna worry about that since it's not RAID related. So we're gonna go ahead and proceed with protected RAID 1 and configure. We'll hit continue, we'll say okay. Now we'll go ahead and open up disk utility. There we go, initialize. Here's our hard drive off to the side. What we'll wanna do is go up to erase. So then here's the section, we'll go ahead and label our drive. Under format, we're gonna have a list of options depending on which operating system you're working off of. I'm gonna go with Mac OS Extended Journal just because I'm working on High Sierra still. For other operating systems, you may need to go with the APFS. Another option you could do is gonna be EXFAT. The benefit with that is that this drive could be seen on a Mac and Windows computer. And then we'll go ahead and hit Erase. And now it's already been formatted and now we have our four terabyte hard drive. So just to prove that this works and if you're like me and very worried and just you know want to have that extra reassurance, check this out. I've got some footage here. This was a drone shot of a hiker up on top of a mountain and I want to make sure that this file is actually on both hard drives. So I'm going to take this file and I'm working with the GTEC, the eight terabyte G-RAID now it's technically now a four terabyte because we did the RAID one 
So now I have my mountain shot on the hard drive and I'm gonna go ahead and eject the hard drive. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up the hard drive door. And we have two hard drives in here. I'm gonna just go ahead and eject physically one of these drives. So now I have a hard drive already removed. Let's close this back up. I'm gonna remount it. And check this out. There's my file. Still there. Plays just fine. And I'm gonna go ahead and eject it again. Safe to remove. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull this drive out. So now we have this drive out and I'm gonna set that to the side. This is the original drive. I'm gonna install this back in. If your drive shows up with a red light at the front of it, it means that there's something wrong with your RAID, that maybe one of the drives have failed or something's going on. As of right now, I only have one drive in, so it's not able to see the RAID. But this is just for demonstration purposes because I want to show you that this file is actually still here. Now this is drive number two, and there it is. Mirrored copy, my exact same file, just to prove that now both files are on each drive. Like most G technology Thunderbolt drives, you can easily daisy chain up to six drives via the Thunderbolt connection. I will put the link down below for this drive if you wanna get this one for yourself. This drive also has a built-in HDMI port which will allow you to add an additional video display. Now this drive is Thunderbolt 3, but it is backwards compatible with Thunderbolt 2 computers with using a Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter. There is also a USB-C port available and it is backwards compatible with USB 3 or Thunderbolt 3 with the included cable. Well, that wraps it up for today's video. If you have any questions or if there's something I didn't cover that you'd like to know, feel free to ask away in the comments down below. I'll also put the products shown in this video in the links in the description for you. And be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Thank you.